Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm a marine biologist and educator here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in to our second part of our sea turtle virtual field trip series, Tell Me About Tomiums. So today we're going to talk all about sea turtle anatomy. So one thing I wanted to start off telling you guys about is a tomium. We'll talk more about this later. But a tomium is another word for the beak of a sea turtle, kind of like the mouth. So let's start talking about what sea turtles actually are, and they're reptiles. So let's talk about some of the basic facts of reptiles. First of all, is that they are cold-blooded animals. So this means that they have to rely on their outside environment to regulate their body temperature. Humans, like us and other mammals, are warm-blooded, so we don't have to worry about that. But because reptiles and sea turtles are cold-blooded, that can cause them some issues if they're in water that's too cold for them. So we'll be talking about that later too. Another characteristic is that sea turtles have scales on their bodies because all reptiles have scales. So they have scales on their skin, but they also have scutes, which are little parts of their carapace or shell. So you can see some scutes over here on my friend. Reptiles also lay eggs. So they can be kind of leathery eggs. So there's lots of different types of eggs. So sea turtle eggs are a little bit more leathery and they don't have quite the fragile shell that you're used to thinking about when you think about eggs. They also will either be on four legs or no legs at all. There's actually not even a, a sea turtle or a reptile that has only two legs and can stand like humans can. So you're either gonna find reptiles with four legs or none like a snake. Another fact about reptiles is that they have ear holes. So we have ear holes, but we have external ears around them. But reptiles just have those holes, so it's kind of more streamlined and you don't see an external feature like those ears. Another fact about sea turtles that really sets them apart is that they have flippers and not fins. So we'll talk more about those differences and you'll be able to see some of the flippers on our resident sea turtle, Bailey, in just a second. But flippers are very distinguishable in the fact that they actually have bones, whereas fins do not. So that is the main difference between flippers and fins. So now we're going to go follow Taylor while we go meet our resident sea turtle biologists, Emma and Lauren, and we're going to check out our sea turtle resident, Bailey. All right, guys, we are here at Turtle Cove visiting one of our resident green sea turtles, Bailey. I'm going to introduce you to one of our sea turtle care specialists. Uh, this is Emma. Hi guys, my name is Emma. I work here on the sea turtle and aquatic biology team. So that means we help take care of our resident sea turtles. We have 12 of those. That means they are deemed non-releasable by the government. Um, so we are chosen as their forever home and we're very happy to be able to take care of these guys here with us. Um, today we are with Bailey who lives here at Turtle Cove. Bailey is a green sea turtle. Once we pan over to him, we'll talk a little bit more about his anatomy today. He has been here with us since 1989, so a very long time. Um, he's roughly 50 to 60 years old. So with our resident sea turtles, we don't have an exact age on them, um, but we can guesstimate their age based on their sizes and how long they have been here. Now, Bailey has a very interesting story. We believe he was caught in a commercial fishing net. Um, and the fishermen did not realize that he had a sea turtle in the net. So they brought that net up onto the deck of the boat and dropped it onto the deck of the boat. Now with that fall, sea turtles, when we talk about anatomy, we'll talk about this more, but their spinal cords are fused to that back shell or that carapace. And that caused Bailey to actually become partially paralyzed. So he does not have any use of that back portion of his body. Also with this fall, that's introduced air between his body and his shell. Um, and that also causes a buoyancy disorder with him. As a green sea turtle, they need to be able to stay or to dive down to the bottom of the ocean floor and forage on all kinds of greens, get their full diet. And with this buoyancy issue, he's kind of at the surface of the water. So that's another reason why he's considered a permanent resident here at CMA. So we can go ahead and take a look at Bailey, talk a little bit about his anatomy. As you can see right now, Lauren is giving him some of his morning diet. So again, he is a green sea turtle. Fun fact about that, they say you are what you eat with green sea turtles. They get all kinds of green things out in the ocean. They would be foraging on seagrasses and algae, and that turns the fat in their body green. So you can see a little bit around Bailey's flippers are tinted green and also around his neck. 
So here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, we supplement his diet with romaine lettuce, and he gets a little bit of endive too. Some of our other sea turtles will get kale and cabbage as well. So that's how they get all the nutrition they need. Um, you just saw Lauren gave him a piece of squid. And with that, um, green sea turtles naturally out in the ocean, they would be getting all kinds of different small crustaceans and things that live in those sea grasses. So we're able to give them that protein with squid and capelin and shrimp and things like that. We can also put their vitamins and any other medicines that they need, hide them in their meat, kind of like you would with your dog or cat at home. So right now you can see Lauren is rubbing Bailey's back shell, which is called a carapace. So I mentioned before that sea turtles' spinal cords are fused to that back carapace. So they have complete feeling and nerve endings in that shell, which is really cool. So to look at it, it just looks really hard and protective, which it is a little bit protective, but they have complete feeling in that. With our resident sea turtles, we want to make sure to get our hands on them because they need to be comfortable with being pulled out of the water for any sort of medical procedures. And we want them to be comfortable and happy in that sort of circumstance. So that's why we be sure to get in the water with them and give them that sort of care and attention. Of course, with the sea turtles that are downstairs in our sea turtle hospital, we aren't as hands on with them because these guys, this is their forever home. So we want them to be comfortable with that. So so that back portion is called the carapace. Their underside, the um, shell portion that covers their belly, is called a plastron. <laughs> you can see Bailey has really strong, beautiful front flippers there. That helps for them propel themselves forward. Again, green sea turtles need to be able to dive down to the bottom of the ocean floor and forage on everything green they can find um, with those front flippers, that is what they're able to do. Now again, with that tactile or rubbing, um, we're able to communicate with our sea turtles, tell them they are doing a good job. And Bailey in particular really likes his armpits rub. So that's what Lauren is doing right now. So yeah, sea turtles kind of have armpits just like we do. Um, now Bailey, his back flippers are a little bit different than a normal sea turtle. So his back flippers, again, he is partially paralyzed. So you can see right now, perfect view. Thank you, Bailey and Lauren. Um, his tail is kind of tucked under and his back flippers, he does not have use of those. Now a cool thing with a sea turtle's tail is the length of their tail will just allow us to know if they are a male or female. So we have to wait until they're the size of an adult, but if a sea turtle has a really long tail that goes past those rear flippers, um, Bailey's would if it would be sticking out right now, but that tells us they are a boy or a male. If their tails are really short or you can't see them at all, then it's a female. Uh, so that's a little bit about Bailey's anatomy. Now that back shell is also made up of scoots. So those are those small pieces that create that shell. And I think something really cool is all green sea turtles look a little bit different. Um, so we have uh, quite a few green sea turtles. That's the main species we have as residents here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And just like you and I, they are all very unique. So they all look a little bit different. All right, thank you guys for that amazing tour with Bailey. Now we're upstairs in our classrooms and we're gonna talk a little bit more about sea turtle anatomy. So I have my friend Vlad here. He is our animal ambassador to the education department and he is a Russian tortoise. So we're just gonna keep an eye on him today while we talk about a little bit more about sea turtle anatomy and compare the differences between turtles and tortoises. So going back to sea turtles for a minute, this is tell me about tomiums. So we wanna talk a little bit more about tomiums. So tomiums are right here. Again, these are all those biofacts that we are permitted to have here at the aquarium for educational purposes. And tomiums are just the beaks of sea turtles. Sea turtles never have to go to the dentist because they don't have any teeth at all. They just have those tomiums which are made out of keratin and they grow throughout their whole lifetime. Now, all different types of sea turtles have different shapes and sharpnesses of tomiums depending on what they eat. So anything that, has, uh, that eats meat might have a sharp, powerful jaw um, so that they can eat their meat. Galapagos tortoises have dull uh, tomiums so that they can tear plants apart. The hawksbill is very pointed so it can get all of those sponges that it needs to eat. And some of them have really strong ones that need to crust, crush crustaceans. So another thing that I want to talk to you guys about are their carapaces or their shells. So this is an example of a carapace right here. 
Um, so this one belongs to a loggerhead and you can kind of see, we've talked about it a little bit before. So this is their outer shell and it's actually fused to their spinal cord. So you can see this is a great example. You can actually see the spinal cord in here and you can see where it, their body is actually fused to that shell. So part of being a reptile, like we talked about before, is having scales. So their body does have scales on the appendages, but also all the carapaces have another type of scale-like feature, which is a scoot. So all these different patterns you can see on the shells are those big scale-like things. Those are called scoots. Now, because their backbone is fused into the carapace, that can be a really powerful thing if they get injured. So if they were to get hit by a boat, then it could damage their spinal cord and it can actually cause a bubble to go up in their shell. Um, and it means that they won't be able to dive down and get food. Looks like Vlad's really exploring the table over here, which is great. So, um, but because of that, it makes them a lot more susceptible to injury because of that fused spinal cord. So the reason we have Vlad up here is I really wanna take a minute to show you guys the difference between sea turtles and tortoises. So we kind of talked earlier about flippers versus fins. So pop quiz, do you guys remember the difference between a fin and a flipper? If you guys don't remember, those flippers do have bones in their bodies and the fins do not. So if we compare Vlad, our Russian tortoise, over here to this sea turtle, you can see this is a hawksbill sea turtle. You can see one major difference right away is their flippers. So right here are their legs. The sea turtle has flippers, but Vlad has these little stubby legs. So you can learn a lot about the physiology of turtles and tortoises just by taking a look at their features. So t sea turtles live in the water. So Okay, sea turtles have those powerful flippers that help them swim through the water. But Vlad doesn't have those. You can see Vlad, our Russian tortoise, he has these little legs. Here's a good view of those for you. And he can use those to walk around and burrow in his habitat. He loves burrowing in his hay and crawling around his exhibit. You can see him checking things out right now. But because of that, because he doesn't have those flippers, he wouldn't be able to swim. So tortoises live on the land, not in the water. So sometimes people get confused and they see a tortoise on the land. So we have a lot of different ones. We have gopher tortoises here in Florida that are, live very close to the coastline. So a lot of times people will see a tortoise and they think it's a sea turtle and they'll bring it back to the water. Well, that's really not good for those animals because they don't live in the water and they can't swim. So if you ever see a turtle or a tortoise and you're not really sure what to do with it, check out its legs to see whether it has little stubby legs or if it has flippers. Vlad's over here cruising. I wanna point out another, um, another feature of sea turtles. So they have that carapace on the top, which we were talking about. And then the bottom of their body is this plastron. So that's another feature of sea turtles. Um, you can see the scoot pattern over here on them as well. I'm going to put this guy down so we can take a look at Vlad over here. So we'll just take a look at Vlad for a second. You can see the underside of him. So all tortoises um, and turtles look a little different from each other. Now you can see if you look at Vlad's little tomium over here, <coughs> tomiums continuously grow. <clears throat> throughout their lifetime. So even though they don't have teeth and have to go to the dentist, sometimes they can trim their tomium naturally just by what they eat. Okay, so the tomium will continue to grow. And if you guys take a look at Vlad's nails over here, you can see he uses those to kind of dig and burrow in his habitat. And we talked earlier about how sea turtles in the first episode, we talked about how sea turtles can have little claws on their front and sometimes their rear flippers as well. And that helps them dig when they start to nest. So Vlad is very curious today exploring his environment and you can just see how he's using those nails and those legs to just move around. Another feature of sea turtles and tortoises that I wanna point out is their shell or their carapace. 
So both turtles and tortoises have very different types of shells or carapaces. If you take a look at the sea turtle, theirs is more flat and streamlined. So if you think about a sea turtle swimming around in its environment, that streamlined shell makes it a lot easier for the turtles to just glide through the water. Now if we pan over here and take a look at our friend Vlad, compared to that sea turtle, Vlad has a much more domed or rounded carapace. Of course, he is a lot smaller, but the shape of his carapace is completely different. So he doesn't have to worry about it being so streamlined and flat because he doesn't have to move through the water since he lives on land. Okay, now we're going to say goodbye to Vlad, our animal ambassador for the day. He's going to go back in his habitat, but he is a great ambassador to help us here with educational programs. So he's about eight to nine years old and he's been doing some exploring. So now he's probably going to go take a nap in his hay. So everyone say bye Vlad. Now we're going to join Taylor back um, at the table and she's going to talk about our activity today. Wow, everybody, that was so great meeting Bailey, our green sea turtle. And now it's time for our take home activity. So all day we've been learning about sea turtle anatomy and now I'm going to put you to the ultimate test. On the link below, you're going to find a worksheet that has all of our sea turtle anatomy that we talked about today. I challenge you guys to download that, fill it out, and maybe even send us a picture so we can see how well you did on sea turtle anatomy. Thanks again so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you later.